Hey, San Diego, this is Dr. Schumard with uh, Integrated Wellness Center of San Diego. Oh, hey, hey, San Diego, this is Dr. Schumard with Integrated Wellness Center of San Diego. And I wanted to do this uh, quick live video. I just got off a webinar <clears throat> with about 20 um, attendees on the webinar um, discussing diabetes. And I wanted to talk a little more about um, diabetes today and some of the conditions or problems that we commonly see in our office in regards to diabetes that you may not even be aware of, um, that you may be suffering from or may have that's not even being discussed to you, talked to you um, from your healthcare practitioners or your doctor or even being treated. But before I go into that, <clears throat> as we have some people jumping on this uh, live video here, um, I want to talk about just a quick story that happened yesterday with a patient that came in. Um, she's been a patient here in our office, I want to say about four, three, four months. And when she initially came in, um, she had a lot of problems, a lot of concerns, a lot of issues, uh, a lot of pain, discomfort, just not feeling good overall, taking multiple medications. Uh, I think she was taking two blood pressure medications, um, one or two different diabetic or blood sugar medications. And, you know, um, about a month ago, she came in and met with me and told me that her doctor had taken her off the blood pressure medication. And she was super excited about that um, because uh, it just it just was just a, a promising scenario for her that she was getting better and, and things were improving. Obviously, her blood sugars were in, um, decreasing as well. And the other thing is, um, we, when we saw her yesterday, she had informed me that for the um, last uh, three to four weeks, she hasn't taken any blood sugar medication and her blood sugars are ranging um, between 95 and 103. So that's incredible information. These are types of things that we see every single day in our office. It's really fun to see these patients go through this transition and, and moving path uh, past the, the traditional um, avenues of uh, taking medication for their blood sugars and, and just living this poor quality of, of life, life and increasing the risk of multiple complications, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video for you today because <clears throat> one of the common things that I see in our practice um, for individuals who are dealing with diabetes have underlying gastrointestinal problems or digestive issues. Now, not, I don't mean symptomatically. Not, most of the people that we, that we take care of ha don't have digestive symptoms. They don't have um, stomach pain, bloating, gas, nausea, diarrhea, constipation. They don't have those things. There are some that have them and they're taking medications for that, but a majority of them don't have that. But when we do a comprehensive analysis on these individuals, what we find is that they truly do have underlying GI problems. They just are not aware of it. They haven't been analyzed and looked at appropriately. They've been analyzed as a diabetic, meaning, okay, you have diabetes, so here's your pharmaceutical drugs. Um, you got to take this twice a day, 500 milligrams of metformin or because they have high cholesterol or whatever, those are just symptoms of the disease and be giving, they're given medications to try to lower those symptoms or to lower the, the, um, the, uh, the overall, what it looks like on a blood test. So in regards to the digestive tract, we'll see individuals who have um, uh, infection patterns. They may have bacterial overgrowth. They may have um, parasites. They may have yeast. Um, they may have other types of underlying problems, um, what's called dysbiosis, where their good bacteria is lessened, so leaving them vulnerable to these types of infections, leaving them vulnerable to the inability to absorb their food, digest their food appropriately. And over time, as they're taking more and more of these medications, as they're eating them appropriately, um, eating foods that is um, causing immunological reactions, you know, just the, the body, the, the gut starts to break down. And what happens is, is the barrier, the lining of the gut, if you will, starts to break down. And that breakdown increases what's referred to as leaky gut. Now, if you don't, if you've never heard of leaky gut, um, which is, you know, many people have not, I'm going to explain to you in the most easy kindergarten way, if you will, of what leaky gut is. Um, so you understand that and where it really stems from and how it can influence your diabetic condition. So what happens is over time, when you've taken um, multiple amounts of pharmaceutical drugs, antibiotics, or pain medications, or medications for your cholesterol, blood sugar, 
blah, 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 all these types of medications, um, eating poor quality food, that could be food filled with pesticides or foods with um, um, poor quality nutrients, you know, fast foods, uh, um, environmental factors, you know, and like I said, in acquiring these multiple infection patterns that can happen inside your gut that we're unaware of uh, that many people have. I mean, I've seen individuals in my office have, uh, just the other day, uh, the analysis showed two bacterial infections, yeast, and three parasites. I mean, think about that. That individual had a ton of problems going on in there in their gut, and they had no clue. They had no symptoms, no problems, but it was causing other issues in their body um, to just cause dysfunction. But as the more and more problematic um, um, occurs inside the gut area, it starts to create a weakening of the gut lining. Now, at a microscopic level, level when you look at the gut lining, they look like these little junctions. They're called um, gap junctions. And so these junctions come together and they're supposed to be tight, like there's a tight, um, uh, tight functioning to re reduce anything coming from inside the gut to outside of the gut. So um, the perfect example I can give you is imagine if you had a shoelace and the shoelace started to get um, loose on your shoe, your shoe would start to fit a little loose, right? And it wouldn't be working as well. Well, the same looseness happens when you start to have a weakening of the gut. The, the tight junctions start to be open up like this. And when they start to open up, they create microscopic holes. And these microscopic holes are not going to create bleeding or anything else going on there, maybe a little bit, but not like these huge gashes in your gut where you're going to bleed out type of thing. But when they create these microscopic holes, now um, larger molecules that should not be going through the gut barrier there are now going to be able, are going to start going through the gut barrier. Um, and so what that what happens is as it starts going through the gut barrier, that starts to create a problem uh, inside the bloodstream because on the other side of the gut is the bloodstream. And on the bloodstream is your immune system. And your immune system will start to react to those sort of th things. So imagine what can start to come through. It could be um, like uh, large food particles that, that shouldn't be coming through because they're not digested enough. Or it could be infection patterns like the like bacteria or, or other types of infections or, under, or, un, or feces that are coming through as well. But when your immune system comes in contact with that, it's gonna start to create a massive immune reaction, start creating inflammation, and that inflammation can start to cause breakdown through the rest of the body. It can cause cellular breakdown, um, increasing the risk of things like insulin resistance that can increase your risk of developing diabetes or can create other problems like autoimmune diseases. One of the um, common things that we know in science is that autoimmune diseases stem from leaky gut. So um, it can be like if you have a condition right now like um, lupus or MS or type 1 diabetes or other types of autoimmune diseases, celiac disease, um, ulcerative colitis, things, these, these, these things can be um, caused because of leaky gut, in most cases, that's one of the underlying issues that are going on there.